rather than having the hardness of the heart, rather than having thorns inside, rather than being on the wayside which is not broken, the soil itself was broken so that the seed that fell into it could bring forth much fruit. What is the brokenness that we bring into the presence of the Lord? Just like that sinner who came forth beating his chest saying, Lord, I am a sinner. I am not like this Pharisee. I have nothing to prove before you. For everything is lying naked in front of his sight. There is nothing that I can hide from your sight. For you are such an awesome God who knows it all. Everything of me, even the thoughts you discern from a distance, you know it all. But there is nothing that is hidden from your sight. I come before you with all my frailties, with all my failures, with all my weaknesses, I come before you. In that heart of brokenness, the seed that is sown brings forth much fruit. Hallelujah. Jesus could speak to the storm, and the storm was ceased. God could speak into the void, and things were created. Jesus could call out the dead Lazarus and he came back to life. Jesus could break the bread and give it to his disciples and a multitude could be fed. All those problems could be solved at the words and the work of Jesus. But when it came to sin, when it came to sin, he had to pay it all with his own very life. The enormity of the waves, the magnanimity of the wind was not in comparison to the depth of the sin. The greatness of the sin was in no way comparable to the greatness of the waves. Waves had nothing in comparison with the greatness of the sin of mankind. The evil, the boastfulness, the pride, the envy, the jealousy, all that sin that is in us is in no way comparable to the winds and the waves that are outside. If all of our sin, if the Adamite sin, if the Adamic sin and the sin of all mankind led Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary, no word could bring solace to that sin, but only his life and his blood. If that be the case, when we come into the presence of the Lord, let us be here with a contrite heart, because words could not solve sin, but only the broken body of Jesus. Of a mere works cannot bring restoration for sin. Only a broken heart that is laid down before the Lord and saying, Here is my life broken. A contriteness on the inside. A contriteness on the inside, just like we heard from today's psalm. He will do worse. Evil, boastfulness, lies, deceit. None of these have a chance before a holy God. As much as he is powerful. He is also holy. Just like our pastor said, the Holy Spirit is able to empower us. The Holy Spirit is able to strengthen us. But that strengthening happens only when we truly confess, I need the strength. I need the ability to overcome. I need the strength to overcome. I have the seat in me. I have lies in me, I have pride in me, I have all of that in me that you truly hate, but I need your strength to overcome. Just like our pastor said, I need the strength. Amen. He is the one who strengthens me. Hallelujah. He is the one who strengthens me. Even in my weakness, he is the one who strengthens me. I am weak, but Lord, you are strong, and I give you the permission. To operate in me. Let that seed fall in me, the broken heart, in this broken heart, in this good soil, in this broken soil, 
Puldu marikka perta hudeyatil a manla bittu birate. Let it bring forth a hundredfold, even the small. Hallelujah. With the heart, shall we go to First Kings chapter nineteen? First Kings chapter nineteen. This is a very familiar passage that we have concerning Elijah. Then Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, Thus says the gods, thus may the gods do to me, and may they add to it, surely at this time tomorrow, I will make your life as the life of one of them. Then he became afraid, got up and fled for his life. He came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and he left his servant there. And then he went into the wilderness one day's journey, and he sat, and he went and sat under a certain broom tree. Then he asked Yahweh that he might die. And he said, It is enough now, Yahweh. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. He lay down and fell asleep under a certain broom tree. And suddenly this angel was touching him and said to him, Get up, eat. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Lord, we pray that you will speak to us, speak to us, minister to us this morning, Holy Spirit. To you alone be the glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now here we see Elijah, after the great Mount Carmel victory, he is listening to the words of a woman. And interestingly, this woman is the one who introduced Baal worship and was the propagator of Baal worship in the land of Israel. And she had prophets whom she gave her sustenance, gave their sustenance. It is said in Talmud that this woman gave the equivalent of her body weight of gold so that these prophets can be sustained. So if she weighed 150 pounds, she gave that much amount of gold for the sustenance of these prophets in that land, the prophets of Baal and Asher. So she was feeding these people, she was encouraging, sustaining these people, and there comes one man, the anointed of the Lord, after much prayer, he brings these people under the Mount Carmel, where the fire of the Lord falls, and at the end of the day, numerous prophets of Baal and Asherah, 400, 450, 850 are killed at Brook Kidron. And probably the very same day, the word comes to this person from Jezebel, who is the initiator and the propagator of Baal worship, saying, next day, your life is also going to be like one of those guys whom you killed this day. At the hearing of this, he becomes afraid and he runs for his life. He runs for his life. He escapes the scene. Three particular things happen there. One, escape. He escapes. Second thing, he goes with his, this, this particular servant of his, and when he comes to Bersheba, verse 3, he leaves his servant there. So, firstly, he is afraid and is escaping. Secondly, he moves into isolation, becomes a loner into the desert. So, from Israel, he is coming down to Judah, leaves the servant in Bersheba, and he is going further down south into the wilderness, into the Negev. Afraid and escape, leave the servant, enter into loneliness, and thirdly, he is coming into this particular wilderness and desiring death. Three stages of getting into depression, getting into depression. What was the initiation of this particular period of depression? Words. Words. We need to realize 
that words have power. Words have power. Words can control. Words can direct. Words can redirect. Words can take us off course. Of course. Words can do that. This woman's words, this person who was worshipping God, had this power in their words to redirect the course of a man of God who was hearing from God himself. He was hearing from God. This man's ears was penetrated by the words of this Baal worshipper. To that extent, he was taken off course. Words of power. Now we need to realize what is the source of the words. What is the source of the words? Now this particular person, he comes to the mountain of the Lord Horeb and he goes into a cave. Interestingly, even though he is in the mountain of the Lord, if you read further down, let us save some few minutes by skipping the reading of the passage, but if you may read further down in chapter 19, you will see the Lord is asking Elijah, why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you in this isolated cave of depression, even in the mountain of the Lord? You are in Mount Horeb, but you are depressed. You might be in church this morning. But my dear brother and sister, you might be isolated in the cave of depression. God is asking you, why are you here in that state this morning? Servant of the Lord, God is asking, why are you here in this state? You might be on the mountain of the Lord. Jesus. You might be in the mountain of the Lord, but you are depressed. God is telling him, hey, come out. Hey, come out. What does it say in verse 11? He said, go out and stand on the mountain before Yahweh. Suddenly Yahweh was passing by. A great and strong wind. Moving on, but Yahweh was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but Yahweh was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake was a fire, but Yahweh was not in the fire. After the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. It happened at the moment Elijah heard. He covered his face with his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. So when did Elijah actually come out of the cave? When did he come out? At the sound of the gentle whisper. He understood or he was toned enough to recognize the presence of the Lord. Veda, Veda, Nulai, Vivedi Kiwan, Pari Siri Kapitaman Ayinu, Eliya. He could understand, sense that the presence of the Lord was not in the wind. The presence of the Lord was not in the earthquake. The presence of the Lord was not in the fire. Interestingly, it is this person who prayed at the fire from, from heaven. And when the fire came in front of him, he is sensing the presence is not in the fire. It is this same person who prayed and the wind blew the cloud into the land of Israel. When there is no wind, there is no movement of the clouds. And if there is no movement of the clouds, there is no rain. So his prayer shifted atmospheric pressure to bring forth winds but even when wind came on that day he understood the presence was not there we need to be taught we need to be taught to sense the presence of the Lord even in depression you can sense the presence. There comes the whisper and he comes forth. There comes the whisper and the Holy Spirit whisper in the ears of those who are depressed, of 
those who are running as a loner, of those who are broken in the house, let the Spirit whisper even this morning in Jesus' name. Let the Spirit whisper. Let the Spirit whisper. Now he comes forth and he is being sent on an assignment. We know about the assignment. He finds Eli Elisha. He finds Elisha. Why could he go in search of Elisha? Verse 19. So he went from there and found Elisha. Why could he go and find Elisha? Why? Not wait for Elisha to come to him. He went in search for Elisha. Why? Because God went in search for him. Elijah. God went in search for him. Even in the wilderness. Even on the mountain of the Lord. Even in the cave. God went in search for him. So he too went in search for the particular mandate God has given upon him to go find Elisha. Before I conclude, in New Testament, Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, in verse 13 onwards, we see about this familiar passage where Peter is saying, you are Christ, the son of the living God, the great revelation. On one side you see Elijah with a great manifestation of the power of God, fire falling from heaven, consuming everything on the sacrifice and even the water outside, and even the soil outside. Great manifestation of the power and the presence of the Lord. On the other side we see Peter with a great revelation of God. And there comes a word later on in the portion where he says, Jesus let not that happen to you. What did Jesus do? He turned around and rebukes, rebukes whom? Satan, rebukes Satan. So Jesus understood the source of the, of the word. Jesus understood the source, the origin of the word. Let's, let's see that particular verse, let's see that particular verse. But he turned around, verse 23, but he turned around and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. So Satan was the one who was using the mouth of Peter to bring that particular words before Jesus. Jesus recognized the word behind, the source behind the words of Peter. What does Adam say before God? This woman that you gave to me, gave me the fruit I ate. But was it the woman? No. It was something else that was the instigator. The source was not merely the woman, but it was the serpent. Adam could not recognize the source of the temptation but instead put the blame on the woman but here Jesus understood the source of the temptation you are a stumbling block to me that is what Jesus is saying you only think about the things of men you are a stumbling block to me see the source rebuke the source not the person not your spouse not your husband not your wife recognize the source. Recognize the source. Recognize the source of the words. Jesus help us. Recognize the source of the words. Rebuke the source. Because Jesus rebuked the source. Peter was still with him. Even later on. Even later on Peter was still with him. Because Jesus rebuked the source. Let us rebuke the source. What did Jesus say in that passage? I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you release on earth will be released in heaven. When did that happen? In conclusion, when did that happen? It says, I am giving you. I am going to give it to you. In English it says, I am giving it to you. I am giving to you. It did not happen immediately at that time. But it was a promise that is going to happen in the future. Acts chapter 2. It happened. 
At the coming of the Holy Spirit, the keys was given. What happened? At the message of Peter, at the message of Peter, hearts were ripped open. The hearts got pricked. Hearts got pricked. The veil that Satan had placed upon the people's eyes was removed. What was bah, what he released on earth? He is releasing something on earth. The eyes are getting open. Interestingly, there is one verse in Acts chapter 2 verse 49. The Lord added to the church daily those who were getting saved. The church is not some physical building. You love the physical building. You need the physical building. But the church is the mystical body of Christ. The mystical body that is seated in heaven, in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That is the church. When Peter released here on earth, those, those who were bound by Satan, Jesus added those who were released into the church. Bhumil Patros Arichadar Swargathil Arichadar Bhumil Patros Ketyadar Swargathil Ketyadar My dear brothers, Holy Spirit can do that through our lives too. As Pastor was saying, Holy Spirit can do that through our lives too, even this week. Are you in depression? You need to come out. There is a gentle whisper. But if we can recognize the source that is speaking to you, is it a Jezebel spirit? You need to rebuke that. Is it Satan that is speaking? Rebuke that. Otherwise you will end up as a loner. You will end up living in the wilderness. You will end up in the wrong place. You will end up seeking death. You will end up running away and escaping the scene. But God wants you to stay put as Peter. God wants you to stay put as Peter in the body of Christ, adding souls into the kingdom of God. Let that be the mandate. Let that be the calling that we pursue. May God bless us and help us with these words. Thank you, God.